over here. That's probably what's the show has started. So that means it's time for the Helma theme song. This uh, beer might be a little too much for me today. Still slaps. It's good. I should talk to the guy that made it and um, see if he can do a, um, like a dubstep version of it. Something like that. That might be cool. I don't know. Rich, thanks for popping on in. So uh, the beer, if you were over on my Instagram, is very fitting for this uh, for the show. It's directions to see ghosts. So pretty. I like this like minimalist design right here. A little ghost house right over there. But it's a thirteen point two. So I'm not gonna go crazy with it today. <coughs> yeah, a little much. No, not yet. <laughs> yeah, I know with this uh, with this single beer knocking me out. All right. Yeah, we'll keep this. We'll just run through a little bit more. <laughs> Aaron, thanks for uh, joining up. Appreciate it. Just let people, a couple more people fill in before I start going over everything. Um, if you want to check the schedule that I have on the bottom right hand screen, Vero, thanks for dropping on by. Uh, yeah, I was just going to go over some pop shop stuff. And if anybody that's in here can do me a favor and share the show on their social, but you hit the little share button in the top, should be right over that way. And if you just want to share it uh, to Instagram or whatever else, that would be great. That helps get people in here and all that. So, uh, you know, this beer is like too thick. I want it to be. I want something a little bit more fun. Not like, not like this is gonna like knock me out. But we'll see what happens. I guess that's how you see a ghost, as if you're passed out drunk, because that, that's how you see ghosts. I don't know. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hannah, thanks for coming on in. So I think we got uh, enough people in here. I can start going over, um, start going over uh, Pop Shop. Yeah, Kelly, I'm doing, um, it's a fitting, it's called Directions to See Ghosts. So, three, uh, a little ghost house on the side. This very simple, these gravestones. I like it. This beer was very expensive. Uh, went to the Booze and Brews uh, place, and it was $30 a four-pack. And I was like, a little pricey. But, you know, for the show, it's what we do, right? I've got a couple more, but I was already yelled at. It's a 13.2. Um, I was going to yell that not to get too drunk this this show. Because, you know, a little, a little uh, you know. But you know what? We'll see where the night takes us. Who, who gives a shit? So, if everybody who, uh, I don't know if everybody on here, that everybody that's in here has uh, been on Pop Shop before, but you want to make sure that your profile is filled out, your address is filled out, your credit card information in case you want to snag up anything sweet. Um, do that. And also, Stina was in here last time giving away gifts, and she complained that she couldn't give as many out as she wanted to because people didn't have their address information in there. So, And I have a different setup right now, so it looks like I'm looking off to the side now, but I'm, like, looking right at this thing. So, Corey, I'm very excited to have uh, our guest tonight, Scans Paranormal. We're going to talk about... Uh, some ghost hunting stuff and I'm pumped to do that. 
later on in uh, the beginning of June, me and a couple friends get to go off and we're going to investigate Fort Knox. Is I think it's a penitentiary. penitentiary? Fort Knox up in Maine. And uh, yeah, we get in a, a ghost hunting troop like lends out their stuff and lets you uh, use their equipment. And they take you to the most haunted places there. So it should be pretty fun. Excited to do it. Rich, thanks for sharing the show. Oh, God. It's intense. All right, so if you check the schedule, what do we got here? So, uh, yeah, make sure you set up your profile with, the, with your credit card info and everything. And in a few, I'm going to do the uh, pin drop that I'm very excited about. So I think very few people are really going to uh, know who it is anyway. So, uh, but whatever, who cares? It's, uh, it's, it's fun, you know? Thanks for, yeah, it's, it's coming, it's coming. It is fucking hot out. It is hot in this little, so Vicky, my girlfriend was telling me, she's like, you're just going to pour sweat on camp. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks. Yeah, make sure you're following the show. <laughs> You'll be alerted for every time I go live. Well, it depends on your notifications. But if you're in the app, it'll be like, hey, Helmoth is on. Yeah, I got this ring light. It's not that hot, but we'll see. You can see what's happening. happening. When Corey uh, starts talking about the ghost, I'm just going to be going... So it's drooling down my face. Yeah, I mean, I should get, I should get makeup. Get Vicky in here with makeup, just some powder. Now we didn't put the AC in yet. It's only been hot for like three days. It's one of those things that you're just like, you know what, suck it up. But, you know. Michelle, <laughs> thanks for, uh... yeah, I know the beer's gonna melt my face. Well, you know, hold on. Maybe I'll just do the opposite here. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I might have to do it. I might have to do it upstairs because upstairs is pretty fucking hot. But I don't know. I just want to, like I said, I just want to just deal with it for the night. Yeah, Rich, you want to come over and put my AC in? That would be nice. I'd appreciate that. Actually, now that, uh, now that, so I'm building a, a podcast studio and art studio on the top of my garage and construction is supposed to start on Sunday. And now I, it got canceled because one of the guys got COVID and has to make up work that was helping me out. Cause I don't know how to do anything like that whatsoever. I can draw anything, but after that, I'm just like, uh, what? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so that got canceled. So maybe I can put up my pool. Rich. Someday we'll do, we'll, we'll get the pool all set up, beat the heat that way. James S., thanks for uh, joining. All right. So, welcome to the Hellmouth. What uh, we do is I have a whole bunch of paranormal and cryptid theme artwork. You can go down on the bottom right-hand side. There's a whole bunch of stuff for you to peruse. I kind of only drop, like, one thing at a time because... I don't have a million things, but uh, I've got all this like stuff that I've had for a little bit, so you can feel free to go browse, um, check that stuff out. Uh, today is free shipping Friday, so you automatically get free shipping with your uh, with your purchase. So feel free, load up, up to five pounds though. I think I think that's the what we can do. But my stuff is shirts and prints. You gotta you gotta get a hell of a lot of. <laughs> Have a lot of prints to be uh, five pounds. So you know what? Don't worry about the shipping if you get that many prints. I'll set. I'll take care of it. All right. So let me uh, 
Let me change this theme music here. So as a, I'm going to do, the, the, so I really know how to tee up this pin drop right here, right? So basically my teen, my teen years were formed by a radio show called Coast to Coast AM. And I would drive to shows. I'd be up all night. And I, if, if people don't know what the show is, it was a show that was on here. It was on from 11 PM to like one uh, to 5 AM. There'd be a little repeat. It doesn't really matter. But, um, and it would just be have people calling in and talking about ghosts, cryptids, um, strange things that they saw in the sky, UFOs. Like uh, Richard C. Hoagland would be a, a guest that would be on all the time. He'd just talk about the face on Mars and like all this crazy stuff. Um, and that show, I remember going to, I remember going to concerts and going through on the AM radio state dial listening to that and then is it slowly going away i'm like trying to furiously find it uh as a transition to the next like town to like get that show back on so um yeah that has kind of like shaped my life in a way that like i love that much so much like all of this uh all this like wonder even like the pseudoscience stuff whatever it's one of those things that is it lets you know that maybe there's a little bit of like magic left in the world and we don't know what's going on question everything and uh yeah so one of my uh big pin releases i wanted to i'm gonna drop it right here and then i'll show it for you um add from inventory all right it's up now uh it's art bell so he's a radio show host he uh he started Coast to Coast AM probably in 1978. It was called it was called West Coast AM back then. 1978, and in 1988 they changed to Coast to Coast AM, and he went on to do it until like 2007 um, or 2005. I'm always bad with like details stuff like that. You know, come back and forth, and uh, yeah, you can see this guy. He come back and forth back. So this one is just him. It's a two inch enamel pin. And hold on, I got a better. Usually, when you show it on a, a phone screen, it's better. Here, let's uh, find it so you can see it better. Not that picture. Here we go. Where's the. Yeah, better. Space Ghost to Coast to Coast. Yep. I mean, and that was a riff on that. two inch enamel pin gold mold there's i think there's seven or eight um screen printing layers so it took a little while to get that there. and then look at this back mold here the hell mouth fucking sick right yeah yeah so yeah and uh he died in 2016 and towards the end of his career he was he was kind of like in and out you know i think he died um i guess telling how he died isn't like really good good radio or good show <laughs> but anyway, yeah he passed away and he definitely left a hole because coast to coast am is not what it used to be um his voice you can listen to his old shows on spotify um you can just type in art bell uh tape vault and there's just all Tons of old sh random shows. The old, um, I said, I said Richard C. Hoglan ones were great. The, hold on, I have one of these here. Linda Moulton Howe, which she talked about like UFOs and night sky constantly, so that kind of stuff. And they had uh, Whitley Strieber on. Um, and it was just like so much good stuff on there. So yeah, you can check those out. And there's something that's different than podcasting today where it's like it's a long longer well i don't say longer form but it's long form and very accepting of any of the collins any of the people that call it to be like i got a big foot in my backyard and he'd be like oh yeah well tell me about it. like what's the experience about been like and so i remember there was a show where somebody called in and said that dolphins 
they were in communication with dolphins and they were interdimensional beings here ready to they spread love with their frequencies that they shot and like that was their whole point of like being here and they talked to them said like oh spread the word that we're here to spread love through our like echo okay whatever the fuck right and it was a two-hour conversation and it was just so entertained and it wasn't just like brushed off i guess so, so i really love that i really love uh, the whole thing that art bell like had uh the vibe he had uh had on his entire run on the show so yeah do yourself a favor check that out on spotify and pick yourself up one of these pins it's a little alien creeping in the back yeah these are like hard to see on here so thank you for everybody who uh picked one up so far so those will be up for a bit i'd love to do george nori i have a carl sagan one coming out pretty soon um and then I also have a t-shirt that's dropping. I think it's going to drop the beginning of uh, uh, June, mid-June. Vera, you don't know who Carl Sagan is? Andrea probably just did backflips. Carl Sagan was a, uh, he was the host of uh, Cosmos. I think he was an astrophysicist. I'm not sure his exact title. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's like, that's a, another one of those things that is when you go back and you you watch or listen to it, it's like a different kind of feel than like the like hard hitting, <laughs> the hard hitting, like, I got to give you this information. It's like chill and you can just kind of like soak it in and it's just like inspires that same wonder. So yeah, I'm excited for that one too. So again, thank you for everyone that picked up one of those pins. Appreciate it. So it's eight seventeen. I think it's time to call in Corey from scans. Does, uh, before I do that, does anybody, uh, scans paranormal is a um, ghost hunting I guess it's a troop I guess is what you would call it anyway Corey will have a, a better uh, description for me when he gets on here but um, yeah if anybody ever wanted to know what it's like to actually be an investigator like that or if you got any questions in the comments please like feel free hit me up in there or him up in there and then what you get to do is uh, oh not what you get to do also, I have a, I'll put this back here. I put this up there. Down in the store. Um, oh, jeez. My products. Oh, wait, I go add from inventory to get it back up. Add listing zero. Oh, apparently, that's not working. Hold on one second. I just want to do this and put it up top. Add listing. There you go, kids. All right added a way to tip our guests on here so if you like what they say if you're just like oh man this, guy, this person's doing a lot of great work i just want to support them um feel free to do that and i as soon as like the show settles out and closes down i just venmo them 100 percent of it um or paypal or whatever whatever they use so so feel free to do that that's in the little store on your bottom right so i'll go back and I put the rpl pin up for a little bit all right, Corey, I'm going to see if I can dial you in right now, and we'll see uh, how this goes. There we go. Hey. Hey, buddy. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? I'm doing, I was like, it's a little, a little misty in here. <laughs> it's it's kind of hot, you know? So I was, uh. I was hoping that, like by this week we would have had my uh, studio kind of like set up and everything because it would be a little out of EC going and everything, but that's all right. That's fine. It right. Yeah. So I guess we can get in, get into this dude. So I saw that you guys just did a, uh, a new hunt. Where, where was it? So, yeah. Um, I'll introduce us real fast. Please, we're yeah, we're, yeah. we're yeah. such noobs at all of this thing. Uh, yeah. So, like Josh said, my name's Corey. A troop is accurate because there's six of right. us in total. Six? Um, 
Yeah, but we are. We're um, if you look at our YouTube page or Facebook or, or even like our Instagram, it's it's literally we're a group of friends and coworkers who have an interest in the paranormal, and it's that yep. simple. It's that straightforward. Um, and we this is year two for us, much like yourself, mm-hmm. I believe. So this is cool. Yep. Um, but yeah, so we it was kind of a big deal for us because um, we've only been doing stuff in state all last year, and this year we finally made it out of state even despite gas prices and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, that uh, was the we real went... terror, you know? <laughs> it really was. Yeah. Luckily, luckily, uh, um, one of my team members, uh, he offered to pay for gas the entire way, which was great because we took my truck. So yeah, perfect. That's a win. Just don't question uh, it. Like, All right, yeah, I was like, oh, you're paying? I'm driving? Done. Deal. Good, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we went to uh, this little town um, in southwest Minnesota called Boyd. Um, I've seen varying numbers about the population just it's small like yep. it's somewhere between 100 and 200 it's out in the middle of bfe i mean there's nothing there there's a strip club though ironically i mean i think all small towns probably <laughs> have something like the, the local like the watering hole that like seedy shit goes down you yeah know? yeah it's yeah it was literally called dangerous curves so <laughs> i mean perfect <laughs> <laughs> uh if- we we did not attend we wanted to but the house to ended up taking all night yeah um but anyway so the house is just it's called the void house um the town was established in 1884 um it was a booming you know old west town if if i don't know if that's the right term because it's not really out west it was in minnesota you know um uh, but i mean it had a hardware store a general store it had multiple shops saloons mm. um barbers restaurants banks hotels um and then as with most small towns they they die out yeah um and so the house we went to um was built if i remember correctly was 1909 um now in 1912 is where kind of the story of the house kind of picks up for at least for what we're talking about yeah yeah. um there was a couple a family called the eckharts that moved in um, it was a couple by the name of Fred and Minnie. Um, trying to find the kids' names was harder than we thought it would be. We do know there was an Alfred and a Wilfred. They didn't mm-hmm. go too far. Um, and Fred was a really respected businessman in the town. Um, he owned the general store. He uh, he was a justice of the peace. He served on the school board, on the church board. Oh, he a helped... pillar of the community. Dude, yeah, he was. He was like a renaissance man. He, yeah. I mean, he, he helped, worked at the fire department. He um, helped build the Lutheran church that is actually right across the street from the house. Um, two of the kids passed away in the house. Um, and then in 1955, um, God, which one was it? Many passed away first, right in the living room. And then in 1958, um, uh, Fred, Fred yeah. passed away in like the exact same spot. Mm. Um, they technically call it the piano room, but it's just basically one giant great room in the house. No um, thing going on. <laughs> basically, yeah. Um, and so the, that's the family who's thought to be roaming around this place. Hmm. Did did they say how the children died? Was it like a natural or like a <sighs> no? Uh, that night, um, we did take a little break to like change out gear, get a, you know bathroom breaks and stuff yeah. real fast. Um, and my uh, team member James, he pulled his phone out and tried to do some research, kind of impromptu to find the kids, because I couldn't find them before we went. Um, and we could he he had a really hard time finding them, um, what they actually died from, how yeah. old they were. Um, granted, you know if we had more time to really dig into like the, the County records and things like that, we would have been able to. Um, but unfortunately on this one, we just, we just didn't have that info. I yeah. wish we would have. Yeah. Plus like, you know, children, you know, children, maybe like, they're just like, uh, give them the privacy, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, totally. hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, yeah. So continue. Sorry. So yeah. So no, it's all good. It's all good. I'm, I'm, I'm winging this. Uh, Hey, same, same, <laughs> fine, you know? yeah, right on, man. Worry about it, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's, um, it's cool. It's a big old, old house, man. It's four stories, 2000 some odd square feet. Um, creepy as all hell yeah. when you first walk in. How did you hear about it? Um, ironically, so there's another, um, uh, uh, I get small paranormal outfit based out of Minnesota. Yeah. called PEWS, P-E-W-S. It's an acronym for Peril. What is it? 
paranormal experiences with Shelly. And it's this uh, gal <laughs> named Shelly. Um, her and a couple of her um, people she know, they're actually kind of putting a, together a little documentary on how people respond differently to paranormal experiences. Um, so we were following her and she was dropping little snippets, little clips of the place, you know, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I've never heard of this place. Where is it? Oh, shit. Can I swear? Sorry. Yeah, do whatever. You <laughs> okay, can... all right, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm just like, shit, we can drive. That's not that far. It's like a five hour trip from where we are. Um, and then the, the lady who owns it, super nice lady, her name's Jill. Shout out to Jill. I know she's not watching, but hey, Jill. Uh, I'm sure she is. Hey, she's here. <laughs> Jill Shelley, woo, Jill, number yeah, one. Give us a lightning bolt over here, Jill. Um, but anyway, um, so it's like a couple hundred bucks. Um, <laughs> Richard, I can swear a lot. I can, yeah. I can accompany, I can make yeah. that happen. Um, but, um, so yeah, she charges like 200 bucks. Um, and you basically just get like free reign of the house. Oh, nice. Yeah, you roll up at like three in the afternoon and you have it until noon the next day. Um, she's nowhere to be seen. And so it's just, it's a total free for all. It was great. Um, not only did we investigate, we slept there. Um, um, my two team members who went um, with Sodi and James, who I've mentioned, they're actually a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. And they slept downstairs on an air mattress in the room where Fred and Minnie died. Yeah, okay. that's bold. Good, you know, I, okay. I apply it. <laughs> now, in my game of one-upsmanship that I feel the need to do yeah. a little too often, even in my advanced age, um, I slept upstairs in Fred and Minnie's old bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Let, um, the, let the disrespect <laughs> flow. Yeah. <laughs> Admittedly. Jeez. Admittedly, Jill did say um, it was cool to sleep on, on that bed if you felt like it. Yeah. Um, so I took her up on the offer. Um, I mean, it's like an Airbnb like... you're paying for, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> basically, yeah. But um, Ghost so, yeah, so, yeah, we actually slept overnight. Um, I'm pounding through the footage as fast as I can right now. Yeah. To get through everything, and uh, I don't know if anything happened. You know, my 12 year old asked me when I got home, "Does anything happen while you're sleeping?" I'm like, "Buddy, I was so goddamn tired." Yeah, I passed out. I didn't. Th it could have sat down next to me and started rubbing my leg. Like I would have. I had no. Yeah, I was out. Real Ghostbusters um, situation with Dan Aykroyd. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. You're like fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have some explaining to do to my wife when I got home. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, it was, you know, the views will just go right up, you know. So you'll be, you'll be good. <laughs> right, but yeah, it's a it's a super cool place. It's um. You know, if there's anybody out there who's interested in this and lives like in Minnesota or is within driving distance, like I highly recommend checking it out. It was worth the money. We we had an absolute blast. So if you're, was there like, did you have to like sign a waiver? Because we're I'm doing something like that in like the next month, and yep. we don't get to sleep there. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't, like when I get out at four in the morning, I'm like, am I supposed to get a hotel to like tent? You know, I can think. Right. So did they like? If they let you sleep, you have to sign a waiver and be like, hey, we're not responsible. Something crazy happens and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you're spot on, man. Yeah, that's totally what it was. Um, you know, there was, you know, make sure the place, you know, take the garbage out when you guys are done. Don't yep. leave the place a mess. The, the typical stuff. Um, and the, they, she also had a few rules in there of, like, no smudging. So no saging the house, yep. anything like that. Um, there you go. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Killing so, her bread and I'm, butter, you know? Yeah, right? I was like, ah, oh, man, come on. Yep. Um, but uh, another one was like no provoking, um, mm -hmm. which in a, even our infantile state of scans, paranormal, that is such, I for some reason, that is my go-to immediately. Oh, 100%. If something doesn't happen. Um, so I had to like rein myself in a little bit, which was fine, I guess. It was whatever. Yep. Um, so yeah, so there was a waiver. We had to sign it. Everybody had to sign it. Anybody who's in the house has to sign it. Um, luckily there was only three of us. So if you're, if you're telling the ghosts to go fuck themselves, mm -hmm. how, how is she going to know? <laughs> it, I mean, fair point. Yeah. Um, you know, you kind uh, you know, you saw that, like, you know, the Ouija boards and dolls, all my stuff. Yeah. Um, that's that, that attic was batshit crazy. Yeah. Um, it, it was the craziest place in the house, like not even close. Um, and so I, it took everything I had to not like 
because uh, Sodi, she 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 <laughs> swears up and down. <laughs> she has a house rigged with cameras. She probably does. I Actually, funny it. funny story, James. He has he has one of those like machines that can like pick out like hidden cameras. Yep. See, there he is. That's James. Actually, I checked. Oh, nice. Yes. That's James right there. Uh, yeah, he checked it out. Looked good. But anyway, um, it took everything I had not to because like Sodi thought she saw something. Like she's convinced she saw, um, if I remember correctly, a head, a shoulder, and an arm in the stairwell. And then it came up the stairs. Oh, damn. Yeah. And there was even a point up there where we're just we're just asking questions. We got the spare box on the Ouija board. And I'm I'm like, I'm you see it in like, you know, TV shows or whatever. Yep. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't know, whatever, man. I keep Josh, everybody. I got so angry, hmm. just rage for no reason. It started to just build out of nowhere. Um, and so I, in there, I was like, Oh, you, you want to play this game? Yeah. You want to do this? But I, I couldn't do it. And I'm afraid is, you know, cause we're going to put this out on YouTube and, right. and, and Instagram and, and whatever. I don't want her to see it. I mean, yeah, you gotta got be respectful. I'm, I'm just joking about, you know, yeah. she's got my money. So I guess in yeah. reality, what is she going to yeah. do? You right. know, but you got, yeah, you gotta be respectful of the places that you go and follow the rules and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So if you're, so I don't know if anybody else has checked out some of those videos. So if you, the attic was very uh, active mm -hmm. and like what, so, yeah. Still a thing. Uh, yeah. So um. So yeah. You know, we're still new. We're looking for that holy grail still of you mm -hmm. know a, a shadow person or an apparition. So, um, right now it's a lot of sounds. Um, we started the night um in the basement of the place, which, ironically, is much newer than the house. You can tell mm -hmm. that it was built much, much, or added on, I guess, much, much later in the house's life. Like the bathroom down there is like way new. It's like actual sheetrock on the walls. Uh, but while we were down there, we did, um, we caught footsteps above us creaking across the floor. Um, James and I both heard, and this is something we heard kind of throughout the night that I am not down with, um, these like whimpering little cries mm. from, be from behind and they're very unsettling. I don't like those when that happens. And it happened throughout the night. It was, there was multiple times we heard that in different rooms, you know, all over the house. Um, and the house was really crazy because you know i remember we were in the parlor room you know where where um the eckhart's died and on, on the website for the house they claim that you can sometimes hear the piano being played mm -hmm. um and for the longest time we're sitting there and it just kind of feels dead like like you don't it, it's it's hard to explain Unintended. If, if you, yeah it's hard to explain if yeah if you if you've never done it you know like you're just kind of yeah. sitting there and you're like it, it feels like you're hanging out in your living room with your buddies and it's yeah. just whatever um and then out of nowhere behind me i'm sitting on this couch with my camera trained on the piano i'm like i'm catching this piano to going off i'm doing it and out of nowhere there's this really loud like bang or creak it's behind my it's like directly behind me um you know yeah, i hear it yeah. Dude, i hear it they hear it we go a little bit longer. I'm still, we're still just doing our thing. Boom. There's another one. Um, and so it was a lot of audio stuff all night. Um, and then we went into other rooms, like, you know, we got in, uh, in the bedroom I was sleeping in. And this, this, this is weird. I discovered this last night. So we were doing a spirit box session in, um, that main bedroom where I slept, which earlier in the day, actually, got these crazy emf spikes just i mean mm -hmm. out of nowhere um and so we're sitting there doing a spirit box session and as near as i can tell it's it was it was a boy like preteen teenager mm -hmm. age is what he kind of sounded like and he said it's it's charles i'm it's just clear as day charles and i wasn't thinking at the time and i don't know if it has anything to do with it Cause I was the one who was in that room with the EMF spikes and I felt the surge of energy going from my, I mean, just through my whole body. And then it says Charles later in the night. And I don't want to draw too many conclusions, obviously. Um, right. But I got a little guy, I got a three-year-old at home named Charlie. Hmm. So now this is where our newness comes in. If I was a bit more seasoned, I would have followed that up immediately. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I would have caught it. I would have yeah. caught it in the moment. I didn't. I let it go. I was like, Charles. Oh, okay. Hey, Charles. How? And yeah. I just let it slide. Um, and then other rooms were surprisingly di- just. There's what they call the girls' room. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was the little girls' room, but there's like a there's a couple doll houses and stuff in there. Super, super mellow, super mellow feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, the parlor w- was super mellow feeling. The um, what is it? Uh, the boys' room they call it. Um, they even have this. I don't want to call it like a possessed painting. That might be a bit of a strong term for it. Uh, but there's this weird painting in there and it's got this crazy backstory about this lady just needed to get it out of her house or whatever. Um, I sat in the closet in there and it was just, it was just hot. I just sat in there and <laughs> sweated my ass off and yeah. nothing really happened. Yeah. Um, so like we, I've been on a, there's a, a standard hotel up here at Mount Washington hotel. And there's, I think ghost hunters did, a special on or whatever right and i tried to get their haunted room that was there and they're like oh that's booked for years and i'm like oh, okay <laughs> sure. right so um but it's like one in, one in the morning and me and my girlfriend we walk up to we go up to we were like oh let's just go check out go by that room and right when you enter that hallway like when you're talking about how like the everything like kind of changes like sometimes like you're hanging out with your pals and all of a sudden you're like okay i can kind of feel some right when you walked in that hallway, it was like the air got like sucked out of the entire oh. place. And then we're just like, okay. And we're slowly like creeping like up to the door and we, and we hear like bashing around inside the room. Like it's fucking one in the morning. Like what is, <laughs> who's, unless they're in the, like, well, maybe we'll like hear, maybe they're like doing an investigation. Cause like what it's a, it's a, you know, a haunted, like it's a pretty popular thing. And it's just like crash, crash, boo, and all this stuff. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm not saying there's ghosts or anything like that, but it was just like something, right. something weird is going on. But like, you definitely get that like everything just like kind of goes out, and you do have that like odd feeling. Um, mm-hmm. But when you're, I had a a couple of weeks ago, I had a paranormal like um, she's a tour guide uh, up here. I'm, I'm up in uh, New England. Uh, I'm in Rochester, but like Portsmouth. Uh, mm-hmm. Pretty old. There's a lot of, lot of like, you know, a lot of old houses, a lot of tons of old cemeteries from like the 16, 1700s. And uh, so she gives tours. And there is, uh, she's talking about how the, and she she speaks to ghosts and like she does like dowsing and all this kind of stuff. She has like, okay. Anyway, she uh, was saying that the, the, it's another dimension. I mean, of course, she doesn't know. It's like what she pop out. Another mm-hmm. dimension like layered on like close to ours. So we're seeing into it. So when you're seeing that kind of stuff and when you're seeing like, you're like, I can understand like, oh, the other dimension is filled with a menagerie of beings, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm always like curious of to what something like that would be of, like, you know, you go in an old house and it has like maybe these like people that died there and they're attached like through this like thin veil or whatever. But whenever people are like, oh, I heard like a piano, I heard like, or I smelled like the... Or like somebody's perfume or like roses or whatever mm-hmm. the fuck else is thing. I was like, I don't, I can't, I, I can't really make sense of like why that would kind of exist in that mm-hmm. realm, you know, yeah. if it's like another world. So, because you know how there's like the, the intelligent apparitions, you know, and then the ones that are like just recordings of like people doing mm-hmm. the same thing, you know? So I don't know. I mean, I'm, I know we won't know until we're dead and maybe even then not, you know, but I was just like, trying to make sense of that stuff is the kind of fun to try to explore and like hearing mm-hmm. the piano I'm like what how does that reverberate through dimension or whatever else you know what i mean so uh, I think that's yeah <laughs> miss mysteries that i will never ever oh, yeah. figure out yeah unless you stare into like a pool of water or, like in like <laughs> a little, like, D thing but yeah, so you're pouring through all the footage and everything that there. So, um, so you're saying like those those couple like spaces are pretty calm. Like, so the attic was the one that was. The yeah, most- it was it was that attic. Um, and so and when we got there, uh, roll it back to when we rolled in and we're just walking around the house, and uh, I'm like, oh shit, the attic, cool. I'm going up here. Um, I I come up and I get to the top of the stairs and I hang a right, and there's those fucking dolls and that Ouija board mm-hmm. just sitting there. And it's just like, I need an adult. I this no, this is not okay in any way, shape, or form. Are, are you like a doll person that's like kind of like iffy about dolls? Or <laughs> certain ones, certain ones. Um, there were three there, and there was only one that I had real, 
major issues with. Mm. Um, and most of the time I'm kind of okay with them. It doesn't bother me. Ouija boards. I'm like, mm, those are, that, that's a non-starter for me. I don't fuck around with those yeah. at all. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Um, if you know anybody out there who likes to good on you, I ain't messing with that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was that attic. Um, and it was, we went up there and it was, and what was crazy is when, you know, Sodi had, uh, oh, holy shit, I just saw something. I just finished setting up this laser grid and this like laser trip wire um, to where, you know, it's a laser and it's shooting at a sensor. And every time that beam gets broken, that sensor beeps and it logs an event. So uh, you can break it with your hand and it keeps going. Well, if it's that beam is being broken and it's registering events and there's nothing there, obviously the thought is somebody else is walking around, right? Right, right, right. Um, so, she, you know, she sees it, freaks out. Um, I did, I bombed down the stairs immediately. Um, I'm, I'm that guy too. Something, oh, I'm going. Bye, later. Hope you guys are okay up there. Um, ran down, yelled around, didn't see much. But then as soon as I got back up, that's when it started. The our our laser beam was being broken. I wasn't doing it. There was nobody there. Um, we started to. I mean, James was the whole time. He felt his arm was being just like slightly like caressed. If mm. if, if just real real softly. Maybe um, he should have spent the night in the bed. Maybe maybe they liked yeah, it. Yeah. They wanted some some weird menage a trois thing. Yeah, him. I don't know. Um, but we had that we had emf spikes just in the middle of the room man and this old house just and instruments were going off mm-hmm. um i heard a rattle which ironically came from the direction where there was i kid you not a, you know those old school baby buggies mm-hmm. with a doll in it <laughs> like <laughs> I, yeah. I, I i went it's it sounds kind of made up um but it totally, I, I was just standing there. We're asking our questions. I'm looking at the EMF meter because it's kind of mellowed out now slightly. And there's a rattle from back to my left where that damn buggy is. Um, and we got, what was weird is we didn't really get any responses on the spirit box, near as I can tell. I haven't quite got to it yet. But in the moment, there was hardly any like, oh man, did you hear that? It was like touching. Like Sodi felt something brush across her face. Um a couple of times I would get up close to those dolls and the EMF meter would, would start to like flash red a little bit when I would get closer to the dolls. Um, it was just a really eerie feeling up there. And then short, and then after I did like, you know, the EMFs around the dolls, mm-hmm. that's when I got mad. I got, dude, I was ready to start throwing shit and I don't know why I had no reason. Was it I like was having a great time? Was it like a slow build or was it just like, instant no it was bang like that it was instant out of nowhere i'm feeling good having fun with my friends we got stuff happening this is rad as hell and then boom i'm gonna start throwing shit um and and that's not me that's not how i roll like like you can do something to make me mad but i just don't go mad yeah yeah that's just not how it works it was spooky it was real spooky um i i wasn't a fan of it I wasn't saying I was getting possessed or anything, but man, there was right. something weird happening up there. Um, yeah. If anybody goes to the Boyd house, go to the attic, please. <laughs> make it, make it <laughs> right. Jot it down. Your little field. Notes. Yep. Yep. Oh. I still have. Yeah. And I still have, what else do I have to go through? Um, we put a night vision camera and our, one of our other laser grids um, on the stairwell. Um, Cause that's where supposedly apparitions and shadows are seen. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even, I don't even have that footage on my hard drive on my computer yet um and that thing ran that thing ran all night long so i'm really you know crossing my fingers i'm hoping we catch something on there because that'd be rad yeah is it just you like i know you got your group of friends so like is most of the equipment your stuff and like you're going through all this stuff or is it kind of you're all divvied up and so I've i've got this one and you know right yeah so we have divvied it up um, you know, I've purchased quite a bit of gear. Um, the Spencers, as I'm going to call them from now on, that's James and Saudi. Mm-hmm. They, um, they got a bunch of stuff. Um, 
And then um, going into this year, I politely asked James if he would help me like go through, if they would help me go through the footage, help edit things. Yeah. Um, Cause I did it all myself last year and granted it's not like super profesh or anything. It's not the most high quality, um, but it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. A lot it's of a lot work. work. It, I'm sure mm-hmm. you got your own regular job and you know, I got a family. Yep. And all that, so you need a little, yeah. little help in that department. Yeah. It, uh, that's that's the hard part of this whole thing um it's not going out and doing it that's the fun part yeah that's the fun part the hard part is bringing it all back home dumping <laughs> everything onto your computer yep. and painstakingly listening to the same fucking clip seventeen thousand times <laughs> Did it say my some... name? yeah exactly exactly yeah. exactly like, okay i think that was and then you listen to 18 times oh maybe not and then you listen to another 18 and you're like well maybe that was yeah um, so like this time I'm really, really being, um, what's the word? Uh, I, I, I'm, I, I have to be sure. Gotcha. Um, I don't want to do, cause I have a bunch written down and I was looking at them this morning and I was like, cause I did a little bit before I went to work this morning and I was like, no, no, yeah. I'm not convinced of this. This is not <laughs> like, you could maybe make a case for what it says here, but um, if I'm not a hundred percent sure, I'm just going to ditch it and not even mess with it. Yeah. Cause if you put something out, that's up like low or media, like I, there's been, um, I follow a lot of like accounts of that stuff and they they show like clearly like CGI stuff and like, Oh, what do you think? You're like, it automatically like discredits <laughs> what they're talking mm-hmm. about. I'm like, yeah, I think that's yeah. like, fun too. Mm-hmm. But like, if you're trying to put this stuff like, come on, yeah. you know, you know, what's not yeah. real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I want to. I want to find real shit and put it out there. Yeah. So if you have, so you got all this equipment, right? What mm-hmm. usually yields the like best results on your on your uh, adventures out? You know. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Um, honestly, you know, it's it's a very common thing. A lot of people use it. You see it all the time. Um, it's that little spirit box, man. Mm-hmm. Um, that thing. Is Can you tell like... me how that works too? Because I've seen it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for please. sure. And, and for, the, for the people in the comments who don't know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so we have we have a couple different ones. We've mm-hmm. kind of realized one works a little bit that better than the other right now. Uh, but what they are is it, it it looks like the old little transistor radios from back, you know, the 50s and 60s. Mm-hmm. Okay. Probably even earlier. So that's kind of what it looks like. Now... Um, the one we re- really like, it plugs into an external speaker. Um, and then what it'll do, it'll sweep through either um, FM or um, AM frequencies. You can do either or. You can sweep backwards. You can sweep forwards. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you can also change how fast uh, in milliseconds. Um, and so obviously, the lower the milliseconds, the faster it's going to rip through those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so... So it's really cool. So it sweeps through these frequencies. And the theory is within that kind of white, noisy type area, mm-hmm. um, that's where spirits can come through. Obviously, this entire thing, a- anybody who's out there doing this, this is all theory based, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's the theory um, is they'll come through. And it does get a little tricky sometimes because it's, I mean, it's sweeping radio frequencies, man. Um so sometimes you'll get music come through um, a little bit here and there, but my name has come through like not, not at where we just were, but it, I mean, it was clear as day. Yeah. Corey, no, thanks. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be dealing with that crap. Yeah. And how um, many times have like, you know, the random sweep going through and the word Corey coming up, you know, is it, is the theory is that they are sweeping through and if it finds a word that a spirit wants to push, it pushes that out or no, it... that's, it. that's more. Um, I wish we could afford one of these. These little guys are pricey. That's like an obvious ovulus, which you've probably seen. Mm-hmm. Um, that is, it has a word database and the, the, the theory behind it is supposedly um, spirits can actually pick the words, the actual yeah. words they want to say this thing or even like um, using a digital recorder for uh, 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 EVPs, you know, electronic voice phenomenons, is that 
they communicate within that white noise that we can't hear ourselves. Okay, so it's so actually it, the spirit speaking. Exactly, not, exactly. Not them plucking out the words from the suite. Okay, exactly. I always thought that because, you know, it was also, it's the same voice of like, oh, I said like all this shit, right? And, mm-hmm. uh, but I just wanted to be clear on what, what was going on yep. with that. So, yep. Um, but yeah, that thing by far, man, like I said, I got my name um, one night, which somehow I missed in the moment. It was, I went back and I was looking at the footage. Yeah. And at that time there were, th- uh, it was me and two other team members. And he was like, holy shit, it said your name. I'm like, whose name? He goes, your name, <laughs> my name? He goes, yeah. And I'm What's like, going on? all right, all right, cool, whatever. And because I didn't hear it in the moment. And then I was home and I was listening. I was like, oh, shit. It yeah. totally, it totally did. Um, you know, we've had intelligent responses. We've had, you get like, we were at the, um, there's a historic governor's mansion here in Bismarck um, that's claimed to be haunted. And we're in the main ha- uh, main room and we got the name Vincent three times in a row. Like boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Um, we don't know who Vincent is. That's what's <laughs> weird. Um, we have no idea who that was. Um, we've had when we we're up in San Haven Sanatorium up north, which was an old tuberculosis hospital back in the day. Um, that was eventually changed into the insane asylum. Um oh, the, geez, geez. <laughs> it was a strike one too. Yeah, that's actually that that's the um that's the footage you use for that little stinger piece you put together, that big building. Oh. That w- that was Sanhaven. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's a, it was a tuberculosis hospital back in, God, what was that? 19, 1912, all the way up to like 19, was it 60, if I remember correctly. Jesus, um, yeah. But I mean, it was me, Sody, and James again. And we're just walking through the halls, trying not to die in this place because it is sketchy as fuck. The entire front entrance is caved in. And uh, we're just walking. Can't breathe. Just comes through clear as day. Well, yeah, no shit. You can't breathe it. You're in a tuberculosis hospital. Yeah, that's fucked up. You know? Up. Yeah, it, it was, that was spooky. We were like, yeah. what is going on? But yeah, that little guy has been our saving grace most nights. Oh, man. Uh, Rich, thanks for the, the tips here. So everybody else that's in here, if uh, if you like what Corey is talking about and like the discussion and stuff like that, don't forget to go ahead and uh, you can you can tip him. And I we send that to them. <laughs> thing, you know so and uh whatever else. Uh-huh. so so okay so that um the spirit box is probably the best one mm-hmm. so, i had a i had a dude come over and um oh woo <laughs> i did come over and we did uh he was checking my fuse boxes and mm-hmm. he had one of those FLIR uh thermal imagers right and he's like oh yeah these and i'm just like looking at because i'm like oh that's so fucking cool right and um so he's like, he's like, oh yeah, these things are so like so expensive and all this kind of stuff, right? And he's going through, he's like checking the fuse box, and we see, um, we see our reflection in the metal of the fuse box. Mm-hmm. And I was like, these things are like way more sensitive. He's like, oh yeah, you got to take a class, and you've got to like learn how to like go through be- go through like all these like different. Um, anomalies to like kind of check off so mm-hmm. like i like the fleer stuff like the footage you see but i was like oh this is like I, this would be rife with like false positives i guess would be yeah what to say have you looked you know, in like, getting something yeah like that? yeah funny you mentioned that um actually uh james had scored and i think i told you this when we did that little tech test a while ago yeah um he had gotten one that he could plug into his uh um his iphone um and there's a little app you download and it's made by fleer it's made by the guys yeah. Um, so anyway, so we got to play with that, um, when we were at the Boyd house, which was cool. And when you said false positives, it immediately triggered in my brain. We're up in the bedroom. You know, I'd mentioned there was weird EMF spikes when I'm up there by myself. Um, so I'm like, guys, get up here for a freaking out. And so they come running up and he brings that with, and I'm looking at it and I'm looking at Sodi. She's now overstanding by her spirit box, um, on the right side of the bed. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, what, what you, you could see the bed. And then right where she's standing, there's this weird spot of heat on the bed. She's not standing on the bed, right? No false. It was a false thing. It was the bed. The, the, the comforter was actually reflecting her heat. Mm-hmm. So 
there I was. I was like, oh, holy shit, what is that? What's going on? Oh, yeah, yeah. no, it's just it's just reflecting shit. Yep. So, yeah, um, that was fun, though. That was fun using that thing um, for the first time. Yeah. yeah, I think we, like, walked through, like, my garage, and you could even see, like, a full minute later, you could see, like, just the footprints. I'm like, this is... This mm-hmm. is crazy. If we're leaving like that kind of practice <laughs> on the world, like yeah. that, just like it opens. I think I've read just recently that like human beings see like 005 percent of light that's available to be yep. seen. You know. Mm-hmm. Man, yep, a- yep. And that's another. Uh, that's one of our tools too that I I like a lot. Unfortunately, it hasn't really caught anything. Um, is our full spectrum camera, um, which I adore. Um, so for those who don't know what it does, it basically sees, um, like you're saying, the spectrum of light that our eyes cannot see. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it'll see an infrared, it'll see an ultraviolet. Um, it's super cool. It's super cool. Um, so everything has this weird kind of like purpley tint to it. Um, unfortunately, we haven't got like any actual movement or seen any random figures on there, uh, but it, it's... To me, it may not be the piece of equipment that's got us the most stuff, but it might be my favorite piece of equipment. I yeah. just think it's like the co- I think it's the coolest thing ever. Yeah, like like pulling like you know the veil to the side and me and getting mm-hmm. to see what the world you know, yeah, how different it is. That's exactly uh, it. That's pretty cool. So mm-hmm. if when you're so like that other the sand haven you just went to or went to mm-hmm. a while ago. Um, mm-hmm. Did you just kind of like randomly kind of be like, hey, this sounds cool? Or did you like seek out? Because there's a couple, there's like um, me and like my uh, friend, we're, we're trying to get into like some places around like in mm-hmm. town and stuff. And we're like, well, some of it's like state owned. Yep. So are you taking that into consideration? Because there's also been places where I'm like, fuck it, let's just go in. Kind of. Do, like, <laughs> are you like, are you trying to be like super legit about it or just be like, well, whatever we can get into, cool. Or yes, so it's, I guess it's kind of a combination of like we'll get in where we can, but we're gonna try and be like respectful and legit about it. Yeah. Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I got over my fear of rejection. <laughs> Finally, it took me 40 years to get there. Um, <laughs> but I just sent out emails. Um, yeah. I, I pulled these lists of all these haunted places throughout the state that we haven't been to yet. Um, and I just started sending emails, just burning them like, Hey, we're these guys. We'd love to come check out the place. Um, and so that's kind of what we've been doing. Um, last year we pulled up a bunch of places. Um, okay. These are the most haunted places in the state. Right. Um, and when we first started, we were actually kind of winging it, to be honest. Um, two out of the first three places we went were, um, one was called, it's called general Sibley park. Um, long story short, um, it was the, uh, was the U S Dakota war. The U S Calvary was out killing native Americans. Um, it was, it, it's a pretty gruesome story. Um, yeah. there was a war going on in 1862. Um, all these treaties that the U S had signed, um, with the native Americans, they just were like, fuck these we're done. Um, it was the and, style at the time. Right. And the Dakotas, um, who, and Lakotas who lived in the area, they were facing starvation. So they started raiding, you know, uh, pioneers and, and their caravans. Cause like, we got to do something. Right. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, the United States sent general Sibley and, um, another, what the hell is his name? Another general, I forget his name now. Um, anyway, sent them to track them down. So they tracked them down to this location here in town. Um, that's just like a fun park now where people go camp and shit um so right weird. it's bizarre dude there's yeah. like a 24 hole like disc golf course on this thing it's the most bizarre thing ever anyway um they they tracked him down and it didn't matter if they were guilty it didn't matter if they were innocent it didn't matter if it was a man woman or child they obliterated them they burned their supplies they yeah. they absolutely wrecked their house wrecked their shit so when I read all that, I'm like, shit, guys, I know where we're going. So we went down there. I've never seen anybody go down there, but it's you look at something like that of where there's got to be some sort of pain or, or anguish or whatever word you want to use. Yeah. Um, I mean, women and children were slaughtered by these guys. There's got to be something going on down there. And not well, only that, well, something, you know, 
Yeah. And it's right on the banks of the Missouri River. And there's always that. And the Missouri, for those who don't know, it's a big river. It's yeah. big. It might not be Mississippi big, yeah. but but she's a big girl. Yep. And I've driven um, over me and like, oh yeah. Okay. Cool. And it uh so there's that often, you know, there's that theory out there of water will amplify. Mm -hmm. Um and then there's all kinds of like old urban legends um down in that area. Like so up above, kind of where where the park is, sort of, um, up on these bluffs, there's there's a, a private Catholic college called University of Mary. And there's always been these stories. And ask any kid who ever grew up here, we've all heard them um, about t t the tunnels underneath you, Mary, where um, there were um, satanic rituals took mm. place. Um, they've sealed up the caves now. You can't go in them or the tunnels. You can't go in there anymore. But that's a that's a. I mean, every kid who's grown up around around these parts, they've heard that multiple times from multiple people. So there's got to be a grain of truth in there. Um, and then also, literally, like right next to the park, there's a Girl Scout camp called Camp Nietzsche. That there's urban legends of that place being spooky as all fucking get out. <laughs> so when I put all that stuff together, we were just like, guys, let's go down there. What the hell? Yeah. Um, and say, same thing with the remnants of an old um, village, Indian village, Mandan Indian village north of town called Double Ditch. Um, you know, kind of the same thing. It was in an old Indian village. There was at one time they had, ex what was the estimates? 160, I think, houses, 2,000 residents. Um, like it was like a functional town. Um, and then the small, and then smallpox came and wiped them out. Yeah. Um, and so we were like, let's just go there. And then, um, and then San Haven was very much, we had hurt, we had gotten wind. So that is actually, that's on Native American land. It's on one of the reservations, the uh, um, Turtle Mountain Chippewa to be exact. Um, they own the land it's on. And they had gotten a 500, I think it was a 500,000 seems small, but maybe that's right. They had gotten a big ass grant from the United States government to tear it down. Um, because like I said earlier, it's, it's, I wouldn't advise anybody to go because it's sketchy. Like in all honesty, a floor mm -hmm. could fall out as you're just walking along. It's, it hasn't been kept up. They just let the elements beat the hell out of it. Um, and so when we heard that, that they were going to tear it down, they were, we were just like, we have to go. We yeah, have but, to get up yeah. there. Um, it, cause it's well known in the state. It, it is like the haunted place in the state. This is it. Um, you know, Zach Baggins and the boys from Ghost Adventures, love them or hate them. Um, they were there. Um, it, uh, so yeah, we just went, it was, it was real spur of the moment. Unfortunately, a lot of team members couldn't come with because mm -hmm. it was just like, Hey guys, we're going, we might not have another shot. Um, and in a weird way, that one to me is still the one that got away because we went up during the day because we didn't know and we knew it was unsafe and, we were re we've been wanting ever since I've, I'm bitter. I'm fucking bitter about yeah. it um, <laughs> that. We haven't been able to go back up at night. Cause now it's like a class B misdemeanor or some shit um, to go in there now. And, um, and cause I wanted to go do a proper night one. Um, but um, so, yeah. I wonder what it is like. Yeah. With all this stuff, of course, like night time investigations, like add to the, the dr dramatic factor, you know, and as to like, you're all kind of like tuned in, everybody's honed in because you're waiting for something. But mm -hmm. I wonder why stuff doesn't happen typically during the day. Like I um, the energy. Yeah, it, so I was looking into that because we were discussing, you know, because I'm coming from, you know, I wa started watching what was a like ghost hunters back in the day with yep. caps, you know, that was the OG, right? Yep. which their new season fyi everybody's actually really good <laughs> um yeah. um that's where i started watching all this stuff and you always see at night so in my brain i'm like we have to go at night like duh everybody goes at night right um uh, and we were debating you know one of our other team members you know she was saying well why can't we go like in the middle of the day it's you know if they're there they're there right, right. It, in theory right that which makes sense um, but I was doing some reading while we were kind of trying to figure all that kind of crap out. And there's certain, so the theory again 
is that at certain times the veil is effectively lifted or it gets thinner. Yep. Um, it's at dusk, it's at midnight, and it's at dawn. Hmm. Um, so that's why I'm like, I want to go at night because I know at the very least we'll be there at midnight. You know, we might right. not hit dusk necessarily or dawn. God, I won't make it home. I'll sleep in my truck. Um, but we'll be there at least for midnight and we'll catch that quote thinning of the veil. Um, and so I don't know if that has anything to do with it because even though we were at Sandhaven during the day, we got stuff yeah. during the day up there. And now I don't know if that's because again, tuberculosis hospital, I'm sure plenty, you know, you got that. It was a 50, 50 shot, man. Like yeah. via can deals. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Um, it, uh, you know, and some of the treatments for it were brutal. Um, you know, I believe what, what was one of them was like, wasn't it puncturing their lung? Yeah. Just to and it's like, but yeah, no, have. sorry guys. I yeah. don't think that's going to work. You're just like, um, eh. Right. Yeah, so and then they went to, and then they turned it into an insane asylum and they, it, they literally called it the hospital for the feeble minded. Yeah. yeah. So you have all of that in this space. Okay? Yeah death suffering we've all heard it before about these kinds of places uh, but then you kind of factor in that it's on native american land mm -hmm. and how spiritual those people are and the mysticism that they kind of carry with them mm -hmm. so we got stuff during the day we got a ton of shit during the day while we were there it was nuts which is why I was like, we're coming back at night. We're coming back at night. And then the local sheriff was like, uh, fuck you. No, you're not. We're shutting the boys down. Nobody's getting in ever again. Um, so it, it very, I, you know, it, it's hard to say. Yeah. Well, it, it's funny you bring up that, um, you know, like on indigenous lands is like more in tune with like nature and spiritual stuff. Well, I had, um, I had just finished an audiobook called Homo Deus. And it was just basically, um, and I only, the only reason that I listened to it was because uh, he was like hanging out with all the elites and like hanging out and going to like uh, the World Economic Forum and the author. And I was like, let's, let's see what he's got to say, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things, like one of the chapters in it was just talking about how human beings, like we were like, you know, start off with like animism and then we went over to like theism and then monotheism. And then that's when we went to monotheism, it took us away from nature and mm -hmm. made it more about like man and like connection with the sky god right and then it went mm -hmm. to liberalism which is not like the political thing but like the the thought of um, human beings like the center of everything kind of deal and just kept pushing us away from you know the connection with like you know any spirituality or anything like that and then one thing that was interesting because it was a kind of like a futurist book but the book was uh saying that like now that we're past liberalism it looks like we're going to be uh going into dataism which is like the worship mm -hmm. of all data you know but like runs mm -hmm. into slippery slope because data is all skewed and all this kind of stuff but anyway going back to what we were talking about with the spiritual so if we've been so separated you know because like it or not we're part of like kind of like the west world is basically built on monotheism you know mm -hmm. and if we're if we're not like in touch with that kind of side of spirituality, we're like, and then we're kind of using it as like, it's a novelty that we're like, we're seeing this thing. Whereas like, if somebody was an animist, they're like, Oh yeah, there's spirits, spirits everywhere. Like, you know, everything's mm -hmm. all this, like I'm in touch with this because like, I actually practice and like that whole thing where like, you know, when you're um, psychic or you, uh, or like em your empath or anything like that, you like practice and hone that stuff. So the more you do this kind of stuff, the more stuff you're going to get because you're going to come into those cues that you like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Charlie or Charles, you know, and they'll be like, mm -hmm. you know, like where you just like mm -hmm. skipped it before. So I like that fact that like, you know, the indigenous people that are, or the more spiritual people, like they're going to be like that land is going to like mm -hmm. be able to, that veil is a little bit thinner, be able to see through. So I wonder if there's some kind of like blanket mm -hmm. of consciousness that like, clouds there, us being able to see into like that kind of I, stuff you know i'm sure there probably is um i mean you know uh, we when we, uh that's that uh, general sibley park when we went down there um um sodi brought her good friend kato 
um, he's of Lakota um, descent. Um, and he came down there and we had some, we had some, I, I can't say the word cause it's Lakota. Um, but he said that we're Lakota, the Lakota language was coming through our spirit box. Um, and then when we were done, um, he had us, when we got to the edge of the forest, we got to our vehicles, um, in order to make sure our souls weren't trapped there or our spirits is you had to call out your name and ask it to come back. And that was a very, that was a Lakota thing. Yeah. So I, it was, it was, it was nuts. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, every single one of us did it. Um, we did it again. When we were up at double ditch. Um, so yeah. It, and you know, in my world, it's, I'm sure it, it, it's blinders, you know? Yeah. 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 I, it, it's just blinders. I'm, I don't have time to, or I'm not, obviously we're doing this ghost shit. So obviously we believe that there's a whole nother veil. There's a whole nother world out there. We cannot see. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually one of our customers at the store, we happen to work at, she's a very religious lady. Uh, but I was trying to inform, she was asking about all this and cause she's never heard of it, which I don't understand how it's like mainstream right. now, <laughs> but um she um was saying even in her in her teachings of 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 um you know christianity it's there is so much more to the unseen than there is to the scene hmm. the amount that there is in the unseen compared to the scene would like basically our monkey brain our lizard brains could yeah. not handle it um so there there has to be um it's and I, that's actually something I struggle with a lot because I didn't like grow up in a religious home or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I really didn't. Um, so sometimes I have, it, it's a, I, I conflict myself and I'm like, well, if I'm sitting here talking to the spirit and he's talking to me, maybe all this God talk is real, mm-hmm. you know, but yet I can't seem to buy in it. But you tell me there's a demon in that house. I'm going anywhere fucking yeah. here. Like deuces. I'm out. Yeah. Um, but demon can be a placeholder yeah. for, anything you know i mean this is true this is true yeah and and like because i talked to um that the last person at roxy zwicker um Mm -hmm. who is the the paranormal like tour host you know she Mm -hmm. would talk about like demons but it wasn't a traditional like demon sense it was more of just like uh because there is this like menagerie of people in the spirit things people are spirit and things in the spirit realm that like they don't all have good intentions just like human beings don't, you know? So you can just mm-hmm. say like, I'm a demon, but like, yeah, it's just this weirdo fucking dickhead from the other <laughs> that you're just like, Oh cool. You're fucking well. Thanks man. Appreciate it. You know? yeah, that, but, uh, I, yeah. I, that kind of reminds me of this story. So last year, um, when we were looking for places, you know, um, unfortunately North Dakota is not exactly a hotbed, um, for paranormal locations. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're like, well, maybe there's a lot of ghost towns though. Um, that were, you know, abandoned however many years ago. And so we're looking we're looking and we're like, Hey, this place, Tagus sounds fucking cool. Um, there's the old story of, of supposedly the old stairs that are still there from the church that burned down back. I don't remember when now, but it's been known as the stairway to hell. <laughs> um, right. And, uh, sort of like, shit, let's go, man. So, um, we drive it's, I don't know. It's two and a half, three hours. It's long enough. We get up there. Son of a bitch. People live here. This is supposed to be a ghost town, right? Yeah. So these couple of good old boys sitting out front drinking their old Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. See this white car with three strangers just creep by. Mm -hmm. We turn back around. I come back and I start talking to them. And we're asking, you know, is everything, is all this stuff posted? Because it kind of looks like it is. And they were, they were super nice. They were super chill. Um, and they were like, yeah, unfortunately it all is. And I'm, and I didn't tell them we were there for ghosts. Um, right. I was just like, we were just wanting to come up, take some pictures, do some exploring, whatever. And they, it, I don't know, maybe they could feel what we were into. I don't know, yeah. but they picked up they, on it somehow. They, they talked like, to yeah, like the- 20 other people, right? but like <laughs> one after another, like, uh. yeah. Right. Who knew we were like car 30 in the day that rolled through. Yeah. Um, but they were like, yeah, man, all those stories you heard, you, you probably read or seen them. It's all bullshit, man. Um, I forget the old guy's name, but it was like, yeah, it was that old son of a bitch, man. 
he would come out at night because so Tagus is a little ways from Minot, which is one of the bigger towns in North Dakota. And what would happen is all these teenagers from Minot would go to Tagus and and party and mess up people's shit. And so what ended up happening, some old guy that lived there would come out and purposely scare the shit out of these kids <laughs> to get them out of town. So it was like, so we debunked it, which was cool, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, we drove up, found that out, and immediately drove another three hours home. <laughs> uh, uh, bummer, but like it's still a good, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That runs. We went to uh, me and a couple of friends. We were doing a cross country trip, and um, we went to Centralia. That's in, I think it's in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. The, uh, what Silent Hill was uh, based off of with the coal fire. Okay. Around. So we're just like, fuck yeah, let's go. You know, let's do it. It's. I think we only drove like an hour out of the way, and um, goes up this giant hill, and it's like, well, we're supposed to be right here. Like, what the fuck's going on? And then you just mm-hmm. see, and you see like people outside there, and, like, and like everything you read online is like. It's a ghost town. Nobody lives there. The town is evacuated. Like you go around the country, you see like these people like loading a couch into like a back of a truck and just like <laughs> people living their day to day. And you're like, all right, this is weird. And uh, so we drive around and we're, we're like, because there's supposed to be like one road that is, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, there are like three houses there. There's supposed to be okay. like one road where like was all cracked and fire was coming out and this kind of shit right and uh so we're looking for like supposed to be right here and we ended up just talking to somebody mm-hmm. and somebody that was like sitting outside and we're like hey we're like looking for like that like old i think i forget what the name was you know it was some kind of how like yeah it's right over there and it was behind it was like overgrown and it was just like a strip of road that had like cracks in it mm-hmm. and then you could like smell like the smoke coming out which was hmm. kind of cool. So like that coal fire was still burning, but it was cool. nowhere near like, yeah, there were like rich, richest, rich one with me. Um, there were a lot of empty lots there, but like there were still like a functioning town, but it was supposed to be like this, you know, the government made everybody leave, you know, cause it was too <laughs> right. to be there. So it was, I feel like, you know, myth is more, you know, satisfying the actual, <laughs> what actually, you know, is going on. It, it, I'm it sure can it be sometimes. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Your shoes would melt on the cracks. Cause like, you know, it was just so hot <laughs> right there, but like, yeah, I thought that was awesome. But at the same time I was expecting, you know, you know, you watch Silent Hill and you're like, Oh, it should be those flames everywhere and this kind of stuff. So it's cool. But you must run into that stuff a lot. Like if you're actually going out and investigating of like, people pumping up or you know, the internet pumping up these things. And you're just like, well, so one thing, not so much Sandhaven kind of like it delivered, <laughs> even though we were there during the day, it delivered. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, some of those other places we went to, uh, the governor's mansion didn't quite live up to the hype. Um, it was cool. Um, you know, it was great to be there because there's a lot of history there. It was the first, you know, governor's mansion of our state. So it was cool. Um, we got some decent stuff, but that kind of didn't live up to the hype. Um, and then like our, our first two real ones when, you know, Sibley and double ditch, um, those were no expectations. Um, so those were like, it, it, whatever we got was just kind of gravy. Yeah. Cause it was zero, zero. We, nobody had told us anything. We were just winging it. Um, you know, and then the Boyd house, you know, we had all the information and sometimes that's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. You know, you have all this info, this happens in this room, this happens in this room, this happens in this room. You don't get shit in any of those rooms. Mm -hmm. Instead, you're up in the attic shit in your pants because there's fucking (laughs) dolls sitting around a Ouija board. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, so we haven't run into that too much. Um, what I find this might be slightly unrelated, but something I find happening to myself anyway, is like, I still believe like we're getting communication, we're getting things like we're getting quote, you know, evidence. Yep. Um, but I do find myself becoming more skeptical of what I see and not that we're professionals by any stretch of the imagination. I want to preface this by saying that. Um, but now that we've kind of experienced some of this stuff for ourselves with like actual equipment 
actual mm-hmm. locations. Um, I'm becoming a bit more skeptical of things I see on, you know, YouTube, Instagram, um, even, you know, the big shows on TV, um, which I still love to watch. Like I do yeah. like full stop. I've been watching ghost adventures since it fucking started. Same. Lame or not. There, okay. That, see that brick, right? That brick coming up on that first, uh, documentary blew my dude, mind. I watched it every dude, day. That's, every time yeah, that's, that's still crazy. That's still crazy. Yeah. Um, so sometimes, you know, I, I, I tend to look at those things now and not that I ever was like, Oh yeah. I just 100% bought in. Um, right. cause I've always been able to, I, at least I think so. My wife might have a different opinion, but um, I've always been pretty good about looking at things with a critical eye. Um, and that's just like, it's, it's getting more critical as we do this now. Um, and so, you know, I'll, I'll watch ghost adventures and I'm like, I don't want to poo poo you guys. You've been doing a hell of a lot more than this than I have, but I don't know if I buy that necessarily. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and like you said, that might be a good thing. I don't know, but I, that's not something I expected to happen. I thought yeah. it would be like, I'm like, oh yeah, of course there's an afterlife and this, that, and the next thing. And I can, I got all this proof and it's like, no, I'm actually kind of going the other direction. Mm. I'm becoming more skeptical. I'm becoming more like when I was talking about um, going through some of the audio stuff for the Boyd house. Now it's like, no, I need to be a hundred percent sure that this is what is coming out of that thing. Mm-hmm. Um, not a guess, not a maybe, no, this is what it is. Um, so yeah. But you'll, you'll never get that 100%. It'll, you, maybe you'll get like 98%. True. But you'll yeah. never get that. Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> That's fair like, point. this is a fucking ghost talking to me right now. <laughs> you know? You know, you're, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's, I, I believe that that's a good thing that, because that way you're less like if you're actually like the goal of, I don't know what the goal of scans is. Right. But the, mm-hmm. I, I think the goal is to like, go out, have fun, investigate, see what you can find, mm-hmm. bring it up, mm-hmm. put it on the internet, whatever. Cool. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But because like I, like I said before, if you're putting out like bullshit, like, Oh, this clearly said like Billy's name. Oh, like, you know, mm-hmm. said our address, that kind of stuff. And you're like, it didn't. And then that just kind of like, leads to like the soup of like bullshit that makes it more yep. kind of like I've got one friend that's coming with me on the big ghost hunt, that big ghost hunt that we're going to do. He doesn't believe anything like that. And I'm like, and a couple friends are like, I don't know if he should come because he's like that. And I'm like, I kind of want him to come. Heck yeah. Like, a little, like a little grounded. Cause like, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to be scared. I've, I love all this stuff. I've never experienced a single thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I've gone to the most haunted places in New England, you know, and I don't have any like equipment. Or I just like go out there and I'm like, all right, let's take a couple of pictures, that kind of shit, right? Right. And nothing's ever happened or anything like that. So, and I do believe that some people need to be like in tune with that or, you know, be with people that are in tune with like to maybe get that little connection from the veil or whatever the, whatever. Mm-hmm. The about, right. Um, but no, I like. I like it when there is a more skeptical eye because it makes, it makes like incredible, uh, oh shit. What's the fuck? What's the thing? It's a uh, incredible <laughs> claims demand, incredible proof. Uh, you know what I mean? Like if, if you're yeah, like, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's some like, uh, like with all like the conspiracy stuff, you know? Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, you need to have that credit card to make sure that be like, Hey, this is actually some, something's going on and mm-hmm. we don't know what it is, but it is not like, it's not a floorboard just creaking on its own. It's not like a house settling. It's not like, you know, a dog whispering, <laughs> whatever. <you know? laughs> so, I, I, I think, I think that's good. And that's healthy for your mm-hmm. brand or whatever, like you're, yeah. that you're doing, you know, I, I think that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. And I mean, I can't speak to my team members. Yeah. For me, there's, there's a purpose behind all of this. Um, I mean, kind of like you, I, you know, I turned 40 last year mm-hmm. and I, right. I, uh, it's not all it's cracked up to be everybody. Um, mm. <laughs> they, uh, I, I <laughs> never experienced anything in my life ever yeah. too. Like, I'm like, I see this stuff. I watch it. I'm interested in it. And so for me, a lot of this is, yeah, sure. Fine. I get to go hang out with my friends. We get to have a good time and that's great. 
Um, but it is like actually proving to myself that this shit does exist. Because again, you can watch TV all day long. You can watch YouTube all day long. You, you know, can watch the, the classic all day long. It, it's <laughs> you know, it's the classic. Oh, I saw this thing on Facebook today. Like, uh, okay, well, we're done with this conversation right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like I want to experience that for myself, so I can really be like, you know what, man? There's something else out there, and I have, I haven't seen anything. You know, but like I talked about in that attic, you know, there's been multiple times now I have felt things that I cannot explain these bolts of energy, these bolts of like when we're up in San Haven, it's just kind of like the main structure of the building. And then there's like the wings that kind of shoot off to the east and the west both times. So the first time, which direction did we go? I think uh, we went west. As soon as I crossed that cross to that threshold, nope, it was no, no, I no, I nope, I do not want to be in here at all, not even a little bit. Hmm. I mean, it was like that. As soon as my foot went across, um, you know, got my shit together and we went obviously. Um, uh, but then when we went back, when then we backtracked through the building again, and <laughs> gotta watch out for dog whispers. <laughs> yeah. Saw that. Uh, <laughs> Heading back the other direction, when we got to the other side of, you know, I crossed that threshold again, getting into those outer wings. And it was immediately, nope, you've gone far enough. (laughs) Um, You know, it happened to me in the basement of that governor's mansion I mentioned, which was a little lackluster for the most part. But I'm in the basement and by myself. I step into a spot where one of our team members said he had an experience earlier in the night that he actually ran out. We have it on film of him. There's a sound. He looks and he's gone. He bolts. <laughs> right. I step into that same spot, the exact spot he was standing in. And there is a bolt of electricity from my feet to the top of my head. I, yeah. I don't know how, I don't know how to explain. I wasn't scared at all. Not even a little bit. I was down there doing it on, I was doing a EVP session down there by myself. I didn't feel scared. I was pretty relaxed. I was pretty chill and just out of nowhere, bang, electricity through my whole fucking mm-hmm. body. Um, so, and I, I don't know how to explain those, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, having those sorts of things happen. And maybe it's cause you're in a haunted location. So you may be like, Hey, something's messing with me. Yeah, And maybe there's some truth to that, but I don't feel that those things happen when I'm at home with my wife and my kids, yeah. I'm wandering around my house, I'm working in the garage. That shit doesn't happen at all. Yeah, It's only really happened at these, these types of locations. So I, mm. I've gotten a little bit of the proof I need. All I need now is I need to see something with my eyeballs. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's coming now. Uh, Hope so. I know I've talked about it on, um, hold on. Let's see what Jess has got to say. Let's not forget. Oh, that's one of my team members. No, I was not possessed. I had an extremely deep urge to take a member of the team downstairs. Yeah. So yeah, that's one of our team members, Jess. Um, we actually had the whole crew at that one. So that was cool. All six of us were there. Um, and we're upstairs in the attic and it's, it's, uh, I guess a child's playroom is the easiest way I can describe it. And we got our spirit box. One of our other members, she has her dowsing rods out. She's doing her thing. Those were wicked fun, man. Yeah. She was like, those things were off. For lack of a better term, those were off the hook. <laughs> it was nuts. <laughs> it was crazy what she was getting. Um, but no, Jess was like, she's sitting in this chair and she was, obs- I mean, obsessed with taking, making sure one of our other team members, his name is Alex obsessed with him going to the basement Hmm. like it just went on and on and on and on you really yeah it was like she's like you need to go to the alex you really need to go down to the basement alex alex you need to go to the basement and it went on and on and on and on it 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 was spooky man it was really weird because she would not let up Hmm. and I, I, i don't know and and she she's She's what you would call sensitive. Mm-hmm. Um, she was one of the ones that went up to double ditch 
that night. And I remember her talking. I talked to her the next day and she had, she had horrible, horrible nightmares that night after being up a double ditch. Um, and everybody else who went slept totally fine. Um, and so, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I brought this up on the show before. So I, I know there's mm-hmm. a couple people that have like probably heard me talk about this. So, um, you know, about remote viewing. Yes. The, so for people that in here that don't know, so remote viewing, um, the, it was a government funded program that they, um, it was used to spy on like Russians where you would like basically psychically you would teach people how to psychically spy on American enemies. And I'm sure other plate, other, like, I think I know Russians had a program, same, same kind of thing, but I got my hands on a uh, government workbook on how to train people, how to remote view. It was no like shit. 1978 and like all this kind of shit or whatever the date, you know, I'm, I'm a big picture guy. I'm, not, I'm a bad of the detail guy. Like I'm impressed with all like the you're like going off with all these fucking facts. I'm just like, <laughs> cool man. <laughs> this is a, you got a note thing here. So, uh, um, but yeah. So I got my hands on that, and I'm like, I'm gonna fucking learn how to remote view, right? So I'm like reading. I'm going through it, and I got to like chapter five, and it finally said like, all right, next step, you need an experienced remote viewer, and I was like, well, that's it. So, because I don't know anybody that knows the remote view, but anyway, that whole thing was basically just teaching you that information, like the world's information, is floating like above your head, you know, and mm-hmm. going through the entire like planet, right? So everybody's like feeding into it, and what you're what it's doing is teaching you, um, your brain is like a radio receiver. And it's teaching you how to like let down some of the guards that are like naturally put in there. Cause if you, if it weren't there, you'd go crazy cause all information flooding in, but it teaches you how to like let, let down some of the guards and focus in on like a certain thing. If you're like, I need to find where Alexi flew into and you're like, Oh, and then you can draw like what airport they're at or something like that. Just to spy on them. But, um, I, the fact that like it was a government like sanctioned kind of thing and they had a 60% success rate, mm-hmm. which maybe, you know what I mean? It's, it's <laughs> enough to be like, something's going on. Right. Yeah. But, uh, uh, like pair that kind of like information with like, all right, well the ghost stuff where like, if some, if you're feeling like these jolts of anger or these people are getting these jolts of these different things, like, and I think of like that, like kind of human beings being these radio receptors and like you're in these areas where like the veil is thinner, you know, to use the, the same, you know, mm-hmm. the veil is thinner and you go through and it gets that like that just like keeps like ends up being kind of like a little bit of evidence that it was like, well, maybe like I, I like the idea that like everything is accessible and everything is like you can be connected into this one thing if you learn how, which yeah. Brings- like the you know spirituality and all that kind of, you know it all is a big mm-hmm. soup of fucking like uh paranormal <laughs> shit you know which you know like i said we'll never know but like exploring it is fun and it's mm-hmm. kind of like why i'm doing this you know like, i'm full-time right on. i'm like yeah i'm doing a show about ghosts and cryptid and stuff because i think exploring <laughs> the stuff is like really fun you know mm-hmm. so which i'm sure the like, same 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 with you guys you're just like this shit oh yeah and yeah it's, whatever it's, evidence it's, it's, we get cool yeah it's it's fun as hell like like jess who keeps popping up there in, in the chat she's like when are we going bigfoot hunting <laughs> when are we going bigfoot yeah. hunting i'm like i'll go you plan it yeah yeah there's <laughs> like, a, I'll, I'll sign me up yeah there's a uh there's a podcaster that's uh around here and she puts up podcasts and i talk to her once in a while and she's like if anybody wants to get like a monster hunting crew, like she's like, I'm in. And I was like, all right, let's like, I know I'm in, I know I can get a couple of dudes in, but like, let's see what else we can get going. But it's just, right. you know, got time jobs. I mean, I be like, normal life. Yeah. Normal. Like, and I remember <laughs> speaking to her cause she's, she's been on some uh, like Bigfoot hunts. He's like, Oh, we look for evidence. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Evidence. <laughs> how do you know what evidence of like a Bigfoot is? Like you see hairs and you may, maybe prints, but I was just like, ah, it, it's, it's hard. Cause I love that stuff. And, but I think my, my, my barometer is high for like evidence. Cause people, 
there's another another like Bigfoot hunting like a uh, group that's around here, and you watch mm-hmm. their videos, and they're getting down and they're all in it and being like, "All right, Bigfoot comes through here and like they eat over here," and I was like, "Do they?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, "How are you so sure?" Yeah, right. Back, back to the uh, like, oh, uh, this Art Bell pin that I put. Oh, where is it? This Art Bell pin I put up. Yeah. Uh, Richard C. Hoagland, which was a guy that would always get on the the show. I don't, did you ever listen to Coast to Coast AM back in the day? I never, I never did. I'm familiar with it, but I never listened to it. Yeah, it's like it's a podcast before there are podcasts. You know, it mm-hmm. was one, of, but it, it de- dealt with all this kind of stuff, and it's there's like something about it that is not as clinical as kind of like the newer stuff. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, Richard C. Hogan was a guy that would come on and he'd be like, NASA's lying. The face on Mars. Um, when these images come out, like the whole world's going to be shocked. And then <laughs> the images did come out and he disappeared. I'm like, that must've been a fucking kick in the nuts for that guy to be like my whole, cause I listened to him for like, a decade coming on that show talking mm-hmm. about like the pyramids on Mars and yep. like these, like this, this cl- there's clearly civilizations. And then like, now we have like high res images of Mars and you're like, that's not a face on Mars. Like it'd be cool if it was, but yeah, it'd be great. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So like, I, I like that of like seeing like, well, I mean, I guess it's kind of shitty to be like, I like seeing that like injection, you know what I mean? We're like, Hey man, everything that you, I like the reset and be like, okay, mm-hmm. let's, let's re let's reconfigure, see what's going on, you know? Cause yep. you believe that stuff so wholeheartedly. And I was like, Ugh. like you, mm-hmm. can, you can't just put, you can't just like lie to yourself nonstop and be like, Hey, hey we got this. We got this. This is what's true. And then, you know, yeah. So, yeah. Back to that cr- critical eye talk we were just having. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you can't just, you can't, I don't care what it is. You cannot just blindly believe. Yeah. And I think if you came on here and just being, and you told me all the stuff about just like, oh yeah, I saw these ghosts and like, you know, <laughs> right down the hall and which, you know, I love that stuff. Just being like, yeah, people are like, I got scratched and all this shit. And like, but if you were telling me like all these like tall tales about like, you know, all the stuff you see, I'm like, all right, man, like, where's the evidence? I'd be like, all right, cool. You know, I like the fact that you got you and, and, I don't, I can't speak for everybody else, uh, mm-hmm. but are critical about it. Cause I think that that gets, lends a lot of credibility to what you're doing mm-hmm. too. And it's, it's, it's better for the whole, the ghost, ghost hunting community as a whole, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Do you, do you guys reach out to, I mean, I know you talked about Pew, the, the other people. Do, yep. you, do you reach out to a lot of other like paranormal So people? we really haven't. Um, Near as we can tell, because, you know, we did do a search of, um, you know, other paranormal outfits um, here in the state. And near as we can tell, they're all, they're all, they're, they're done. Like, Mm. you know, their last video was uploaded, you know, five years ago. Yeah. Or something like that. Um, I think there might still be an outfit out of Fargo, which is about three hours away. That's still in operation. Um but there's really not a, I said earlier, this is not a hotbed for any of this shit. Yeah. Um, whether it's locations, um, groups, it's, it's just not. Um, and so the most we've done at this point is we, we've corresponded with that paranormal experiences, um, with Shelly group a little bit. Cause you know, we, they were at the Boyd house. Like, I think it was like maybe three weeks before we were maybe a month before we mm-hmm. were there. Um, and so, you know, we threw up that picture of, of, as I've said it a thousand times, those fucking dolls and that fucking Ouija board. Um, and they were like, what the shit is, what, what is happening? Yeah. And we're, um, I have, I, you know, and I told them cause they're looking for more places to go this summer. I was like, well, you know, the governor's mansion is here in Bismarck. It's pretty cool. Um, it's worth a drive if you guys can make it. Um, so we, it's hard for us to reach out to anybody because those who don't know, where we live the next closest like functional town city whatever it's yeah. an hour and a half away yeah you know so we're we're a little isolated where we're at and, and it sucks so it makes it makes this hard it makes this like 
another level of difficult. Like you were saying where you live, there's, you know, there's lots of old places. There's all these yeah. old historic haunted places around here. I mean, the state's been around since 1889 and I've told you some crazy stories about, you know, native Americans getting slaughtered and there's stories and there's history, but actual locations to go to it's hard. And like I said, other groups, as far as I know, there's nobody who's active or willingly like putting themselves out there like we are like yeah. on the instas doing doing this thing with you tonight um trying to get our stuff up on youtube um there might be groups out there just going out and doing it but yeah. i have no way to find them yeah yeah and i think like so i've been doing this for i mean i last year i've been doing the show you know i did like kind of sporadically and this year was i was like all right 2020 year, i'm really gonna like Mm-hmm. kick it up and like to make sure I'm on a schedule just cause I like I said, love doing this stuff and getting into the community of like, you know, all my friends would be like, Oh, Josh, you're like the alien conspiracy ghost guy or also, but <laughs> finally getting into the community and like, no, and starting to like talk to all these people. I'm like, oh, I don't know fucking shit about anything. So mm-hmm. yeah. I, I like that. I being like humbled with all that kind of stuff. It's good. Um, so finding like like-minded people is like, must be kind of because I'm seeing like I see a whole bunch of like the ghost stuff like on like Instagram stuff like that, but I don't see a lot of people going out and doing it. I see like a handful of them going out and doing it. I'm mm-hmm. saying like it's like defunct kind of stuff, you know. I think people just kind of like it's like a little bit of a fad, not a fad, but like they do it for a couple of years and they're gone, you know, kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Like I do, you know, real life gets in the way and that kind of shit. I get it, but yeah, so. If I guess a question to like lead into if you if location wasn't a problem, do you have like a, a place that you've read about that like you real you guys really want to go to? Um, oh either, shit! Yeah, is there something that you're just like, oh Fuck yeah, let's go? Um, I mean Waverly Hills, mm-hmm. um, Trans Allegheny, um, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Rolling Hills Asylum. Um, you know we joke about it at, at work because you know most of us work together, like we've said um we joke sometimes about skinwalker ranch um <laughs> have you some of us are the way? yeah i have yeah it's a little but ridiculous but it's fun you know yeah right some of yeah. us are like a hard no others are like fuck yeah let's go when are we going yeah. um there's um you know we've even talked about like stone ram inn over over in england um there's yeah i mean th- th- man there's so many places across just in the united states shit much less the world um that i would love to go there's more places in minnesota i want us to try and get to uh, um one of them is nopaming or nopaming i don't know how to pronounce it it's it's Mm -hmm. a native american word um but that was a tuberculosis hospital it's in northern minnesota um they man dude they're every right i know right shocker (laughs) um oh penhurst there we go thank you jess that's another good one um I want us to go there up to Nopaming um, because they Minnesota has actually put that on like their state historical site thing. So they're actually devoting money and resources to keeping it in, in, in good condition, which is what we didn't do here with Sandhaven, which is a bummer. Um, so I want to go there. There's the, the, the Palmer hotel in Minnesota. Um, there's down in South Dakota, um, shit. I'm going to forget the name of it. I, I want to go so bad. Um, there's a mm-hmm. park down there. Um, and the water runs red. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter. I don't right? give a shit. I don't give a shit what that is. I love it. <laughs> right? Right. right. Dude. I know. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's thought to be haunted by native American spirits. Um, I'm a little fuzzy on now those details all of a sudden right now. Um, But there's there. And then I've been looking at, you know, I used to live in Montana and um, there's the Bannock ghost town. There's the Garnett ghost town. Um, There's just so many places I would, I want to go. I would love to go. Can I go? Shit. I don't know. Um, (laughs) Yes. Jess Goldfield has been on ghost hunters multiple times. Um, <laughs> who knows? Um, you know. You know the old... So, yeah, I mean, 
you name it, I would. I can't speak for everybody because, like I said, like Skinwalker Ranch is like a hard no for some of them. Mm -hmm. Um, But for for me, it's it's almost anywhere, man. If we could get there, I would do it. Yeah. In a in a in a, in a fucking blink, man. <laughs> Sh- show me where to sign if I have to. Like, let's yeah. go. Yeah, I mean, it's just so like you know that like um, I know because before as a tattooer, because I'm a full time tattooer now. Mm-hmm. Um, before as a tattooer, I was a um, illustrator and a freelance illustrator, and I, if there was a band in Hot Topic from like 2008 to like 13, 14, like I did a t shirt for them, right? And mm-hmm. I always was like, man, I wish I, and I finally got my passport like a couple of years ago, but it's like, man, I wish I could travel, but I just can't afford it. And you read all those blogs that are just like, you can travel if you're broke. It's like, you just got to put the money, like it just showed you how to do it. And I was like, fuck, like, it's kind of, it's kind of on me. Cause I was like, I'm going to go get a fucking, like, I'm going to go get like some steak and cheese from place down here. Or, like, <laughs> you know, you know, go get a weird pizza or something like it rather I spend my right? money it versus the like put this out so i guess like you know if you look at goals you could be like all right what would be my you know and you could cross it off and like do that kind of shit but i think uh i think that would be kind of cool for you guys to like Mm -hmm. just like knock some stuff off your bucket list you know yeah one of one of the big ones in the state still and we talked about it when we were driving back from boyd um because i look i looked at james and sony he's like jesus christ guys we just spent a fuck ton of money to go to minnesota why are we not going to Fort Abraham Lincoln yet? Mm-hmm. We're going to spend the same amount of money to go there. Um, and that's just south of town here. Um, it's where General George Custer's house is. Hmm. Yep. Um, there's barracks. Uh, and so anyway, um, you know, you got to pay, um, but you get to go through the house. You get to go through the barracks. You get to go through the stables. You get to go through the guard towers. Um, there is the old Mandan Indian village that's down there. Um, the place is huge. It's huge. It'd be far, by far the biggest thing we've ever done. I mean, San Haven was big. This is a whole nother ball game. Mm. Um, have fun going through that footage. Yeah. Uh, everybody, <laughs> everybody's helping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, and so like, it's a lot, it's a lot of money to go. It is. And, and, you know, I don't want to get into it too much, but obviously the economy sucks and everything's so course, fucking yeah. expensive right now. Yeah. Right. And so it's a big ask for everybody to do. Um, but man, I'm telling you that that's the one that is like, at least for this year, that's, that's the one that's, that's the carrot. That's, yeah. that's the, that's the goal for this year is to get there. Um, and another thing we want to do is try and we're trying to figure out how to do it. Um, is to get the word out to people in town who live here and who might think they have some weird shit going on in their house mm-hmm. and be like, we would be happy to come in. It ain't going to cost you a dime. <laughs> you know, like, like we we're, yeah. this is all pro bono. This is, this is, this is, you know, this is for us to get our rocks off. Like it's cool. Like, um, and to maybe help some people here in town, with you know i don't know what the hell's going on i come out here and my fucking chairs in the kitchen are everywhere yeah can you please help um i really want to try and do that we all do frankly um how we get that out into the front into people's minds around here Mm -hmm. um we haven't quite figured that out yet and even though this you know paranormal and ghosts and all this stuff is for the most part, I would say has become mainstream. Sometimes that's a negative word, um, but it has. Yeah. Um, that the community we live in, it's a great community, but this part of the country is also very conservative. So I feel like we're slightly up against that a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. But that's, a, that's another thing I really want to try to do this year is get it into the eyes, get it, get people to see like, hey, there's this group here in town. My house is scary as shit. Mm-hmm. I want to move. Maybe they can come in and help me out. Yeah. <laughs> you have to like get, you have to go into like parking lots to put like flyers in everybody's window. But then you, 
you're gonna run you run the risk of some weird some weirdos mm-hmm. being like, oh yeah, come to my house. Kind of. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, I did go. I mean, I printed out business cards for us yeah. a while ago, and I went out and I hung a bunch of those up. Um, obviously, they're business cards, so they're small. So who knows? People even see them hanging on those bulletin boards yeah. and whatnot. But um, yeah, I would love to get into some like private residences around town because I, I, I mean, one of our team members, her house is spooky as all get out, you know. So there's got to be others. Oh yeah, and there has to be. Um, and, and yeah, even in New England though, there there's um, like a lot of people have stories, but for some reason, like I don't know, you, I don't know if you know this from like where you are, but like New England, it's all of like. Everybody's like, oh, go fuck yourself. Everybody's just like, move along. Like, all this kind of shit, right? Yeah. Because, like, you know, we all live in, like, the winter and, like, mm-hmm. you know, it's cold and all this kind of stuff. So, like, there's all this old shit happening, but everybody just, like, she's like, oh, well, we'll deal with it kind of deal. You know, they just, mm-hmm. like, there's tons of stories, but, like, people just kind of, like, keep it to themselves. Yeah. It sounds like you're running, may, might be running to some something similar. Yeah. I, I, I think about it a lot, and I think... Cause I, like people, there's a saying, it's called North Dakota nice. Um, and it, it's a thing. It really honestly is a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, when my wife and I moved here from Montana, she was like, holy shit, people are like nice here. I'm like, mm, it could be, it, it, they are. Um, but you still got those old crusty ones running around. Right. Yeah. Um, you would not say that in it... New England. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think if, you know, we went after like, you know, like our age and younger mm-hmm. who have now grown up watching this, seeing this, yeah, probably believing it far more than, you know, you know, grandma does. Um, I, I think if we go that route somehow, um, it, it might bear some fruit. Maybe. I don't know. We are, however, I just can't believe I forgot until now. Uh, June 11th. I just got done finalizing the next one we're heading up to minot to this winery um called urban winery and i haven't been had a chance to do a whole lot of research because i'm busy with the boyd stuff Mm -hmm. um but apparently back in the 20s minot north dakota was called little chicago because of all the illegal drugs alcohol violence prostitution Perfect. that went on yeah and th- and this winery is right in the heart of downtown where this stuff took place um and the the owner of the place is just i sent him an email and he's like fuck yeah when do you want to come up and we're perfect like, cool yeah. man and he's he's just it, we're really looking forward to i'm so psyched to meet this guy because he's just like you want to be on i'm like you want to be on camera and like show us around and like Hell yeah, let's do it. I'm like, Perfect. all yeah. right, buddy, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I'll, you know, some of the fruits of uh, getting over your fear of rejection. Right, know? yeah, so I, I, there's got to be more people like that in the state. If there's 100%. one, there's more. It's like cockroaches. There's yeah. one, there's more. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, Corey, man, I think that's a great place to, like, end it. And uh, I'm excited to like, see what you guys, like, June 11th, you, you're going to go do that? June 11th, we're heading out. Yes, sir. Awesome. So yeah. So if you just want to plug your socials and let people know where they can. Okay. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, Facebook scans paranormal. Um, we're far more active on Instagram. If you really want to keep tabs on what we're doing, that's where it is. Again, scans paranormal. Um, <laughs> not, 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 not too much of a reach, but um, yeah. Yeah. Come follow, come hang out with us. Um, we're just a bunch of nerds having a good time. I mean, I think that's, I think that's like, anybody in this kind of like you know this 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 field or like we're all just like eh, we're all like dorks we love this stuff like fuck it right uh, yeah right yeah totally gotta embrace the nerd yeah perfect Armin. well it was awesome talking to you i'd love to have you back you know when yeah whenever you get some stuff going and we'll uh we'll figure it out and i'll reach out and feel free to ever reach out to me and we'll we'll get something going okay yeah uh thank you josh really appreciate this thank you so much all right man thanks man appreciate it all right yep see ya take care That was uh that was great. That was a uh, great. I'd say thank you to Corey and then his team members that are here. I think Jess and James. I think yeah, you guys uh 
you guys are much appreciated for coming on and all that. So, uh, the people that are left in here, if you want to show your appreciation, we do have like the tip jar for uh, scans. Like I said, I'll I'll send that along after the show's uh, taken care of. Um, yeah. So, did anybody anybody have any like thoughts on the show or anything like that you wanted to chat about or anything like that? I think. Like, I, I know I brought it up to Corey when we were talking about it, of, like, I really like the critical eye with, like, this kind of stuff. Because if you don't, if if you don't have that and you're just, like, cool with, like, whatever the fuck getting through, then, you know, it's just, like, then you automatically just, like, I roll your eyes and, like, not care or, like, what's going on. So there's no real, like, point to, like, having that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm appreciative of uh, of you guys doing that stuff, so. Yeah. Sorry. Fun show. Um, in two weeks, I have Carly the Tarot Witch. Uh, I think she's at the Village Tarot Witch on Instagram. She's coming on, and um, tarot is one of those things that I know nothing about. And you always see it in your periphery, and like you see it all over everything. Everybody's like, oh, tarot, they're reading these cards. And I'm like, will you come on and like educate me? Because I've got no clue what this is. So I think uh, I think that'll be also a cool show because I'll be like, are you talking like space ghosts that are like talking you through cards? Like, I don't know. Like, what's the deal with that stuff? You know, so maybe I don't know. Anyone can pin. Thanks for popping in. We're uh, we're wrapping the show up right now. So feel free to like check out the any uh, stuff in the store that you're uh, might be into. Uh, let me pop it. So I did drop these Art Bell pins, uh, if I can put these in here properly. You know, the way that you do this is a little counterintuitive, so sometimes, but yeah, I got this two inch enamel pin, mm -hmm. Art Bell, Coast to Coast AM. If you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Man, yeah, hell of a show, loved it. Yeah, it is sweltering hot right now. Whew. Anyway, I was checking out the shop. I'm actually putting my abduction print in a frame tonight. Oh, awesome! Thanks for. Oh yeah, yeah. You you popped in. You got a couple. Uh, you got a couple pieces last time. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Man, yeah. So we'll keep it open for a few and uh, just see if anybody wants to grab anything up before I close everything up. Uh, so we got the tarot, uh, the village tarot witch. She's coming on in two weeks, and then. After that, I'm trying, trying to get somebody to uh, come on speak about the New Hampshire Wood Devil because I have uh, T-shirts ready to go um, for that. So they came in last week and they are very nice. They're on a next level 6200s, which is my, fa I'm a T-shirt nerd, so they're my favorite T-shirt that you can print on. So yeah, <laughs> Rich, I'll, I'll get you one. Um, I'll get you one this week. No problem. No problem. Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to get somebody to come on and speak about that. I've put some emails out to um, the Cryptid Museum and a couple people. Um, yeah, I'm trying to, to talk about that, you know. And I have somebody on the back burner that I know that will talk about it and will, like, do a good job. But I'm trying to get an indigenous... Um, person or person from a tribe up north to like chat about it because um uh it's it's a uh, it's like their their folklore their myths that's been kind of like like wood devil is kind of like the white man's like take on it you know what i mean so Corey, thanks for grabbing one of those um what equipment do you use for prints um some of these are screen prints so i hire out uh, to get them screen printing and then i have um the other ones are just digital prints that you can like send away for on like epson like they're i think technically they'd be g clay but like they're not they're not like the fancy like crazy ones you know so like some of the did they love my 17 digital prints are just like um uh like laser prints or something like that didn't finish this beer because halfway through that i don't i don't know nobody could tell 
how we could tell. But I was feeling it because I was just like, oh, keep it, keep it together, Josh, keep it together. But directions to see a ghost this beer was pretty damn good. But uh, it uh, definitely uh, hit me a little harder than I thought it was going to, but. Not as bad as a couple weeks ago where I was like scrambling to get up and like I had to like get up and pee before I like pissed myself on camera. I mean, the views, think about that. Oh, I don't know. I got, hey, I got to work tomorrow. I got a long day of tattooing. Actually got a um, message from my, one of my clients uh, for tomorrow. I was like, do you have AC in the shop? I'm like, yeah. Don't worry about it. It's going to be pretty crazy. Oh, man. So after the Wood Devil stuff, does anybody have any... <laughs> yeah, I do have it, but it's it's not turned on to its full potential. Uh, does anybody have any... Uh, I don't want to say requests, but like any like themes that they're into. Cause I'm going to, I got the Carl Sagan thing coming out and I think I might try to get, um, George Clark on who is, uh, um, a friend's brother who is, he's a scientist, but he might be, he's got some stuff on like some satellites for NASA and stuff like that. So I was like, Oh, I'll have him come on and talk about space stuff. I think that'll be cool. And I also just reached out to a flat earth guy. So fingers crossed on that one, because I think that would be pretty damn cool, too. Because I don't think the Earth is flat, but I want to know why he does. <laughs> I know, hey, I think flat Earth people are like the insane clown posse of the conspiracy uh, realm. It's easy to, like, hate on them, but, like, hey, why not? Why not entertain it? So some of the stuff's kind of kind of funny and fun, so screw it. <laughs> So yeah, we got a whole bunch of we got a whole bunch of things going on. So we'll see what happens with that, and hopefully, oh yeah, and Tim, um, Tim is in the Amazon right now, and he's like canoeing down of the fucking Nile, and he was supposed to be on like this is the show he was supposed to be on. He's like, hey dude, I can't. I'm gonna be in a canoe on the Nile, uh, in the Nile, and I'm like, okay, I'll I'll talk to you after. So. I wonder what kind of shit he's got to talk about. I'm excited for that one. But he wanted to come down and actually do like a live uh, podcast kind of thing. So, yeah, that'll be cool. So, yeah, a lot of, lot of cool stuff coming up. It'll be, uh, it'll be cool to see what like pans out and all that. But if anybody's got any uh, suggestions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Shoot me a message because I think uh, doing one every two weeks is kind of like we're burning through some stuff here so i think uh i think maybe we're gonna do like maybe a guest a month and then maybe like do like one um do two shows a month have a guest once a month and then maybe have like a friend come on and we just like chat about some like crazy stuff that's been going on in the world i think that might be a cool um cool way to go about it switch up the format a little bit you know and especially if I have like the studio all set up, that'll be, that'll be good. I had an idea to do a podcast about, uh, uh, smoking weed and reading comics, but the guy that I wanted to do it with had some reservations cause he didn't want the public to know that he was like smoking weed. So hey, that's all right. Maybe, maybe, maybe he'll change his mind sometime. <sighs> cool. All right, so I'll give uh, people a few minutes to just, like, check everything out. What else do I got in here? Uh, I got... Excuse me? Hmm. Something happened. Um, yeah, check out the store, see if you like anything. I'm going to close it down in a minute here. Um, so thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Appreciate it plug person i mean i guess so it's weird it's weird you gotta hide your true self hey whatever you gotta do it's fine i get it <laughs> but i think a podcast about like just talking about comics and like, smoking weed i think would be a blast you know but hey whatever it's fine maybe i'll just do it on my own <laughs> just solo and just be like 
So this week, <laughs> Superman punches guy was fucking cool. You know, it probably wouldn't get a lot of, probably wouldn't get a lot of views. That's all right. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to say thank you to everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks to Scans, Paranormal, Corey, um, everybody here that stopped in. And yeah, it was a blast. And I can't wait to uh, chat with them again. So hopefully I can get them back on after their big uh, their big investigation in June, June 11th. So follow them on Scans, Paranormal on Instagram. Um, that's how I found them. And uh, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care, everybody. Oh, hold on. I got to send us out with, uh, I got to send us out with my theme song. Oh, no.